following is a presentation of RJL 518 Sports Network. The Chicago White Sox had a tough series in two games against the Seattle Mariners in the American League wildcard series, but managed to come out on top two games to none as they took the Mariners right out. The Cleveland Indians have now been waiting for their turn to play in the playoffs as they had to find out who they would play when they found out they would play the White Sox, their American League Central Division rivals, they knew it was on. After two exciting division series that we've had, in the National League Division Series with the Reds losing to the Dodgers, and in the American League Series that went five games with the Athletics bringing the Yankees to the brink, but the Yankees coming out on top. Now we, switch our, we now switch gears to the second American League Division Series here in this 1994 restart. Let's go and let's see who the Yankees will be playing in the American League Championship Series. Hello, everybody. This is Robert from RJL518, welcoming you here to Jacobs Field for Game 1 of this 1994 American League Division Series Bravo between the Chicago White Sox and the Cleveland Indians. As Philip Reynolds is the first to enter Jacobs Field, welcome, sir. Welcome here for an exciting matchup. I think we're in for a real, real killer of a series. Um, I'm a little surprised at the way the Oakland and Yankees series and the way the Dodgers Red series went. Two teams, one upset with the Dodgers beating the Reds and one almost an upset with the Yankees just barely beating the A's. This series between the White Sox and the Indians, I think is pretty evenly matched. I don't know who this series is going to come out on top, but this will be fun. This will be exciting as all division series should be in this best of five. The fans here at Jacobs Field are excited. They've been waiting. They, are, they have been waiting for this. So now it's time to see if the Cleveland Indians in 1994 will see how far they can go. Remember, the Indians haven't won a series since 1948. Their drought still goes on. Was 1994 the year that Cleveland was finally going to do it? Before they had a chance against the Marlins in 97? Before they had a chance in 1995? against the Braves before they had a chance against the Cubs in 2016? Who knows? Let's find out tonight, game one of this exciting series here in Jacobs Field, starting lineup for the Chicago White Sox. It'll be Tim Raines batting first. Joey Cora is second. Frank Thomas batting third. Julio Franco, the designated hitter, batting fourth. Robin Ventura is fifth. Darren Jackson is sixth. Lance Johnson, seventh. Mike Lavalier batting eighth, and Ozzie Guillen batting ninth. Defensively for the Indians at first base will be Paul Sereno. Second base, Carlos Bayerga. Third base is Jim Tomei. The shortstop is Omar Vizquel. In left field is Albert Bell. Center field, Kenny Lofton. In right field, Manny Ramirez. The catcher behind the plate and is Sandy Alomar. And on the mound... For the Cleveland Indians is their number one starter, and that's Charles Nagy. Ten wins, eight losses, 3.45 ERA. He is the starter for the Indians in this game. As, so we'll see if the number we'll see how it goes when the number one starter plays the number three starter. When the, apparently when you're the when you're the wild card team, you know you have to play a couple of extra games. We're all set to go. I'm excited for this one. This should be a lot of fun. Let's go to the top of the first inning. Leading off for the Chai Sox will be Tim Raines. Charles Nagy is a right-hander. Raines batted 285, nine homers against rights. The Chicago White Sox, and before we get a chance here, Tim Raines starts this series. As I got to get back to the first matchup here. As Tim Raines starts this series, he is two for six for the playoffs. Raines is two for six for the playoffs in the two in the two games they played against the Mariners. I'll give you, I'll tell you where the White Sox stand at that time. Here is the pitch to Raines. Here we go. Let's get this game underway. Starts with an in play 83, and that's a ground ball hit to short. Easy pickup by Vizquel. Throws to first for out number one. And of course, I forgot to put the sheet underneath here with the out so just give me a timeout here 
So we slide that in and mess, of course, everything up, but that's okay. I knew I always seem to forget something once in a while, don't I? Oh, uh, well. Okay. So out number one. So you can see the outs. Is that good? That's good. A little crooked as usual. And there we go. And there we go. Okay. Brains grounds out. And the next batter will be Joey Cora. Cora bats 278. Two homers against the two homers against the rights. Two homers against the rights. And Joey Cora for the yeah, let's see here. Joey Cora for the series is for the playoffs is 0 for 7. So he's not off to a good start. Not off to a good start. So we'll see what we get to here. He hasn't yet to get a hit. He didn't get a single hit in the two games against the Mariners. So here's the pitch to Cora. That's going to be a tough 65, and he's still not going to get a hit. That's a ground ball hit to second base. Easy pickup by Bayerga. Throws it over to first for out number two. Two men down. The batter now will be Frank Thomas. Thomas in the playoffs is three for seven. He did have a home run in that series. So actually, he's off to a pretty decent start here against for, for the White Sox. I don't know. We'll see if he shows up later. Here's the pitch. And that's going to be a patient 84. And that's going to be a base on balls. Frank Thomas draws the two-out walk. He gets on base there. And that will bring up the designated hitter, Julio Franco. Franco is two for eight for the playoffs. Two outs here in this American League Division Series, game one. That's going to be a tough 63 and a fly ball at the right. Coming under it is going to be Ramirez. He settles it and makes the catch, and that will end the inning. So no runs, no hits, but a walk. And we go to the bottom of the first with the Indians coming up to bat. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Cleveland Indians. Batting first will be Kenny Lofton. Batting second, Omar Vizquel. Carlos Baerga is third. Albert Bell batting fourth. Eddie Murray, the designated hitter, batting fifth. Paul Sereno is sixth. Manny Ramirez batting seventh. Jim Tome batting eighth. And Sandy Alomar is batting ninth. Defensively, for the Chicago White Sox, at first base is Thomas. Second base, Cora. At third base is Robin Ventura. The shortstop is Ozzie Guillen. In left field is Reigns. Center field, Lance Johnson. Right field, Darren Jackson. The catcher is Mike Lavalier. And on the mound for the Chicago White Sox tonight, their number three starter, and that's Jason Bure. 12 wins, two losses, 3.81 ERA. How interesting that Bure is the three, is the number three starter in this rotation. And he is already pretty good. That's why both these starting rotations are good. So as I said, we're going to see a good, I think, a really, really nice series to, uh, in this next five day, three to five days. Leading off for the Tribe will be Kenny Lofton. Beret is a right-hander. Lofton batted 359, nine homers against rights. Let's see what the Indians can do as they take their first crack in the playoffs. That's going to be a patient 26. Lofton's going to take a walk to first, ball four. And that's not where you want Lofton if you're the White Sox. Lofton, definite threat to steal. And an eight on the dice, we'll definitely see that. The batter for Cleveland next is Omar Vizquel. But Lofton, of course, is going to take a crack at stealing. So let's see what he can do. An eight, and Jason Beret's hold rating is a 10. So we should get a very good chance here. A 0 to 90. Lofton goes for second. 91 and higher. He holds, but Beret gets a chance to throw him out. And there he goes. Kenny Lofton. That is a steal rating of a B. And the throw by Levire. His arm is a 3, which is pretty good. It's going to be a very good attempt to throw down a second. Lofton is safe. Pretty, pretty in there much pretty easily. Kenny Lofton steals second base. He had safes all the way down to fair, which tells me that that would not have been a problem for Lofton. Stolen base, and the Cleveland fans here at Jacobs Field are already excited. Here's Omar Vizquel. Vizquel bats 304, no homers against rights. 
Here's the pitch coming up. That's another patient 54, and Vizquel's going to get a base hit. That is a single for him. It's a sharp liner that drops in front of the left fielder. Runner on second can only advance a base, so Lofton holds it third. He will not score, and already Cleveland starting with a big run already. Runners at first and third, nobody out. And near the Indians, you know what they're capable of doing. Next batter will be Carlos Baerga, batted 345, 11 homers against the Wrights. Runners at first and third, the White Sox are going to call the infield in. Barriergo does not ground into many double plays, so the infield in is called. Here's the pitch. That's going to be a tough 23, and it's not going to matter. Barriergo's going to belt that one into left. Is going to belt that one. It's a deep drive off the wall in right field. Runners advance two bases. That's going to be a double for Bayerga. One run comes in to score. Lofton will score easily on the double by Bayerga. Vizquel goes to third. He will hold. Bayerga at second, and it's already the first inning, and the Indians are up one to nothing. Carlos Baerga, RBI double. And already Jason Bure having some issues out there. The next batter for the tribe will be Albert Bell. Bell batted 353, 27 homers against Wrights. Runners at second and third. The infield is still going to be called in. Lucky didn't two runs didn't score, but only one. Already one nothing on the Indians. Here's the pitch for Bell. And that's going to be a tough 16 and swing and a miss. Struck him out. Bell will head back to the bench. Big strikeout by Beret. And he finally gets an out. Runners stay at second and third. The next batter will be the designated hitter. That is Eddie Murray. Batted 275, 12 homers against right. One out here, bottom of the first. Infield in is still called. Here's the pitch. And that is a patient 28, and Murray is going to draw a walk, and now the bases are loaded. It looks like the Indians are really matching them pretty well. they got good eye. That's already the second walk given up by Beret. He issues 5.1 walks per nine. And now with the bases juiced, the batter is Paul Sereno. Sereno bats 282, 11 homers against Wrights. One out, and bases loaded. The Sox are still going to call the infield in. They do not want to get far behind quickly. Here's the pitch to Paul, and that's going to be a patient 35, and he walks in a run. Jason Bure walks Sereno, his third walk. Vizquel will trot home. All runners move as the merry-go-round turns, and it's 2 nothing right now, and the Jacobs Field crowd is already going nuts. Two nothing Indians, as Jason Bure has already walked three batters, given up two hits. And now the batter for the Indians is Manny Ramirez. Ramirez bats 205, nine homers against right. He's usually better against the lefties, but he had the most at-bats against right-handed pitcher for right field. One out, bases still loaded, 2 nothing now, and they're still going to call infield in, try to get some outs. But Jason Bure needs to make a pitch over the plate. Here it comes. That's a ballpark check. Oh, four. That's going to be a wheelhouse for Ramirez. A 1-68, to 68, a 28 to Ramirez. Crack, and you got it. That one is high. That one is deep to right center field. It's out of here. Grand Salami, Manny Ramirez. Oh, what a way for the Indians to start the series. A ballpark 0-4 and a right-hander, and Jacobs Field is a is pretty much a hitter's park, a 1-68, to and that is a definite wheelhouse that a 28 against a right-handed pitcher, Ramirez, blasts that one out of here. 
And that is a grand slam for Manny Ramirez. And the Indians. And the in, and only one out, and the Indians are already up six to nothing. Time out. The fans here now are jumping up and down. Jason Bure can't even get out the inning. There he has to come out. He has to come out. Jason Beret will come out. As he's already fatigued, giving up six runs, he goes a third of an inning, and that is it for him. Jim Tomei, the batter, and we'll see a lefty come out to pitch against him. It's going to be Paul Ossenmacher, who will now take over in relief. Jason Bure goes one-third of an inning, and I believe that is the quickest I've had any pitcher get knocked out in any game I've played so far of payoff pitch. Six to nothing, Cleveland, and now Ossenmacher will pitch against Tomei, and still one out. Tomei bats 167, two homers against lefts. Austin, Austin Mocker can pitch innings one and two. Here's the pitch to Tomei. Tough, 37, and struck him out. Swing and a miss. Tomei will head back to the bench. And finally a K for the in, for, against the Indians. And the next batter will be Sandy Alomar. Bats 189, no homers against lefts. Two outs now. Ossenmacher pitches to Alomar. That's a defense check, 99. That's not going to be a problem. Error check to third base. The ball is at the Ventura. His error rating is a one. And even though it's his, it's the worst rating he got, but a 99 on the board, no problem. Ventura's got it. Throws to first, and the inning is over as the Indians send nine men to the plate. Six runs on three hits, three walks, and a big grand slam by Manny Ramirez at the end of one. It's already six to nothing Cleveland. We go to the top of the second. Charles Nagy will come out for Cleveland. As the Chicago White Sox, maybe they maybe they were rusty not playing a little while since the since they beat the Mariners. But of course, we don't do any rust. Here's Robin Ventura. He will lead off for the White Sox. Bats 287, 14 homers against the Wrights. Ventura for the series, for the playoffs, doing very well. He's four for seven. Nagy pitches to Ventura. We'll see if the White Sox can get any runs back. In play, 98, fly ball to right. Coming under, it's going to be Ramirez, and he makes the catch. That's out number one. Next batter will be Darren Jackson. Jackson batted 309, five homers against rights. Darren Jackson for the playoffs, two for seven. Remember, I'm getting, remember the White Sox did play the Mariners, so they do have stats. So the batters do have batting stats as well as pitchers. The Indians do not. This is their first playoff game. And Cleveland right now looks rested, and the White Sox look rusted. Here's the pitch to Jackson. That's going to be a defense check 34. That could be interesting. Error check to third base. The ball is hit to Tomey. His error rating is a 2. 1 to 64. He's going to bobble it. Not good. That's going to be an error on Tomey. It's a one base error. As Tomey bobbled it, threw it off the bat, threw it off the bag. Darren Jackson is going to be safe. And that is an E5. First error on the Indians. And the White Sox get a man on. That will bring up Lance Johnson. Johnson batted 267, two homers against Wrights. Johnson for the playoffs, three for eight. One out. Darren Jackson, a 4B steal rating, but you're down by six runs. You're not thinking about that. Here's the pitch. That's a tough 33, and that's going to be popped up in the infield. Oh, he just missed it. Popped up, 
First baseman calling for it. Sorrento is going to make the play. And that's out number two. Oh, Johnson missed the hit by a one by one. Two outs. The batter will be Mike Lavalier. Lavalier batted 276. One homer against the right. Lavalier played in only the first game of the series of the series against the Mariners, and he's one for three for the playoffs. Runner on first, two outs now. Lavalier at the plate. Here's the pitch from Nagy. That's a tough 72. And that's a ground ball to short. An easy pickup there. Easy pickup by Fiscal. He's got it. He'll throw to second to get the force, and the side is retired. Where is everyone? I don't know, but they can join in whenever they're ready. No, there is. When they're ready to watch, they can join me. Sometimes some people don't get the uh, don't get don't get the notification, I guess. But that is okay. A ground ball to short, and that will do it. So nothing for the White Sox. No runs, no hits. There was an error. We go to the bottom of the second. Cleveland already up 6 nothing. Paul Ossenmacher will come out and pitch his second inning. Here's Kenny Lofton. Lofton walked his last time up like most of the Indians batters to start the inning. Indians went, sent all nine to the plate in the first inning. We'll see if Cleveland wants to put more runs on the board. That's going to be a patient 50, and that's a... And that is going to be a walk for Kenny Lofton. Lofton is going to get his second base on balls. He will hold it first, an eight, a ten on the dice with a steal rating of eight. He will not steal. And even though he, if he was, you're up six nothing already. I already say you're. Not, I already take strat rolls off. Here's Omar Vizquel. Vizquel singled his last time up. Lofton on it first. Ossenmacher pitches. That's a tough, that's a tough 68, and that's going to be a ground ball to second base. Fiskell's double play ratings at six. It's a good play by second. Throws to short to get Lofton. They will not get Fiskell. Fielder's choice, one out. Fiskell will be at first, and now the batter is Bayerga. Bayerga doubled his last time up and scored a run and scored Lofton. One out. Ossenmacher with the pitch to Bayerga. Bayerga bats 261, eight homers against lefts. That's going to be a tough 0 3 and swing and a miss. Struck him out. Bayerga heads back to the bench. Second strikeout for Ossenmacher. He averages about 7.9 per nut. For nine. Two men away. The batter now will be Albert Bell. Bell bats 367 against nine uh, and nine homers against lefts. The scale still on at first. Ossenmacher pitches and deals. Patient 18 walk. Bell will trot down to first. Bell struck out his last time up. Now he walks, and now we got runners at first and second. And the batter is Eddie Murray. Austin Mocker looking on. He would like to keep this at least a 6 nothing game, but the Indians might have some other plans. Runners at first and second, two outs. Ossenmacher pitching to Murray. Here it comes. Defense check 90. That should be okay. Error check into short. The ball is hit to Guillen. His error range is a 1 to 64, 90 on the dice. Guillen's going to make a great play. He's up with it. Throws to first and gets the out. And in this inning, in this inning, Cleveland is held back. That just goes as a nice grounder to shortstop. No runs for the Indians and no hits. There were two walks in the inning, and that is it. Two in the books. Cleveland still leading six to nothing. We go to the top of the third. As Ossenmacher is going to have to come out because that was his last inning to pitch. 
as the White Sox have to go to their bullpen early. But remember, in the division series, um, all batters, all whoever pitches today will be available for the next day. Not a problem. With simulated travel days, pretty much the bullpens are usually always fresh. It'll be the championship series where something can get interesting. Top of the third and leading off for the Chicago White Sox will be Ozzy Guillen. Guillen batted two six, that's three hundred. No homers against rights. And Ozzy Guillen for the playoffs. What is he here? Ozzy Guillen for the playoffs is two for eight. So he's two. So he's batting 200. And that pretty much tells all you guys what the White Sox have got so far. So Guillen at the plate as we now start the top of the third. Here is the pitch coming. Tough. Oh, eight. Swinging. Nope, that's called strike three. Looked like he about ready to swing at it. He held back, but the umpire called him out anyway. Struck him out. Guillen will head back to the bench. A definite strikeout on Guillen. First strikeout for Charles Nagy. He averages 5.7 per nine. He averages 2.6 walks per nine. One man out. The batter will be Tim Raines. Reigns grounded of short his last time up. Pitch from Nagy. Tough. 98. Fly ball to left. Coming under this is going to be Bell. He makes the catch. Out number two. Reigns will head back to the bench. And now the batter will be Cora. Cora grounded out his last time up. Nagy checking in. And here comes the pitch. In play 34, and that is a popped up behind the plate. Alomar is going to call this one, and he makes the catch, and that ends the inning. One, two, three, as Charles Nagy has not allowed a hit yet in the first three innings. Doesn't mean anything right now, of course, but I thought I'd say it. Bottom of the third coming up, still 6 nothing Indians. Leading off for Cleveland will be Paul Sereno. He walked his last time up. White Sox will probably bring in another lefty to deal with it. And they will, and it's going to be Dennis Cook. Dennis Cook will now come on and pitch for the White Sox. As Cook looks like he has to pitch innings three and four. One of these, possibility, one of these pitchers might have to take one for the team, but we'll see what happens here. Bottom of the third, Sorrento the batter. As you want to show me the containers, yes, I think I know what you mean. Here's the pitch from Cook. That is a tough 52 base hit by Sorrento, and he smacks that one into left field. That's going to go to the wall. Sorrento on his way to second, and he's got it. That's a double. Sorrento gets his first hit of the game, and it's a big double. Runner on second. And now a big ovation coming up from the, from the Jacobs Field crowd as Manny Ramirez, who smacked the home run, the grand slam, in the first inning is at bat. Jacobs Field, as I said, pretty much close. A, a hitter's park. 1-53 to left-handed batter. 1-68 to right. So combined, that would be a 2 to 121. I call that a bit of a hitter's park for Jacobs Field in 1994. Runner on second. Manny Ramirez ready to hit one. Again, possible. Dennis Cook sets it in. Here's the pitch. Ballpark check, 34. And that's going to be another wheelhouse to Ramirez. And a 1-53. to Ramirez is not going to get a homer, but it's going to be good enough. That's going to be a double for Ramirez. A definite double. Zoreno will definitely score from second. Not a problem. Ramirez goes to second. And he is having a heck of a start to the night. Seven to nothing, Cleveland. Manny Ramirez hits a big RBI double, which scores Sereno easily. Ramirez now two for two, and the fans are really giving Man Ram a big cheer. The next batter will be Jim Tome. Tome struck out his last time up.
Dennis Cook already gave up one run. If he gives up another one, he's automatically fatigued. Here's the pitch to Tomei. In play, 17. That would probably do it. That's going to be a base hit for Tomei. It's a sharp liner into center field. Runner on second scores. Ramirez comes around from second. Tomey has an RBI single. Still nobody out. It's now eight to nothing. It has been a long time since I've had a game like this. Long time. I think the la I think one of the earliest ones I had was a game between the Twins and the 1969 Twins and Braves. The Twins won that game 15 to 3 and right now Cleveland's on pace to eclipsing that. Tomey on at first, still nobody out and they got to take Dennis Cook out. Next batter for the Indians is Sandy Alomar. They'll bring in another left-hander. If they have another one, which they do, which they don't. So now they'll go to the right-handers. It'll be Jose De Leon coming on. De Leon will now try to pitch innings three and four. Sandy Alomar at the plate. Tome on it first. Still nobody out. De Leon. Here's the pitch. Patient. 50. Base hit for Alomar. The hits just keep on coming. That's a zingle. Ball blooped into right field. Runner on first advances a base. Tommy will hold it first. They won't. They're not going to run out of pitchers. If I absolutely have to, I'll put a fatigue pitcher on the... Uh, I'll keep a fatigue pitcher on the mound. But they still got plenty of pitchers. If I have to use starters, I will. It's only... But they must go through the bullpen first. Runners at first and second, nobody out as Alomar gets into it. Four straight base hits. Cleveland making a statement in this first game. The batter will be Kenny Lofton. Lofton has walked twice. Here's the pitch. Tough. 92. That's a fly ball to right. Coming under it is going to be Jackson, and he makes the catch. And that is out number one. Tome will not move. He'll stay at second base. No need to try anything. And now the bat, now it's up to Omar Vizquel. Vizquel is one for two with a single. Fans here at Jacobs Field are now beginning to lay back in their seats, knowing this is it's very rare you get a game like, no, we've not seen one yet. Here's the pitch. That's a patient 40, and that's going to be a single for Biscal. Base hit. Base hit. Sharp liner drops in front of left field, but the runners will only advance one base. Tome holds it set at third. Alomar holds it second. Vizquel on it first. And still one out. Base hit by Vizquel, his second hit of the night. And the bases are juiced for Carlos Baerga. As I said, the Jacobs Field crowd right now is just laying back in their seats, enjoying the destruction. And bases loaded, still one out. And Cle and the White Sox are going to play the infield back. I think they've already resigned themselves, thinking this game is already over, but you never know. Now, they're going to play the infield in, because Carlos Baerga does not ground him any double play. So the infield will be in to try to prevent any more runs. Jose De Leon, here's the pitch. Tough, 22 <laughs> that's a base hit by Baerga, and it's a gun, and that's gonna be a bait, probably a bases clearing double. Deep drive off the left field wall. Runners advance two bases. Tome will Tome will score. Alomar will score. Omar Vizquel goes to third. He has a choice. Baerga goes to second. 
Bayerga goes to second. He has a choice. Fiskel's going to stay at third. And unbelievable right now, Cleveland is absolutely putting a hurt on the Sox. As the score is now 10 to nothing, and we're only in the third. And DeLeon is going to come out because now he's fatigued. The next pitcher will be Kirk McCaskill. As it doesn't look like any White Sox pitcher can do anything right. And still one out here in the bottom of the third. Ten nothing Indians. Runners second and third. Still one out. The batter's going to be Albert Bell. Kirk McCaskill will try to get it, try to get see what he can do. McCaskill pitches the to bell. Tough. 27. Struck him out. Swinging a miss. Bell will head back to the bench. Second strikeout for Bell. For Bell. The batter now is Eddie Murray with runners at second and third, two outs. McCaskill trying to get in. Now the pitch to Murray. Patient. Now we have your rare play. There's your rare play. Red die, red first. 66. If runners are on base, umpire calls a balk. All runners advance one base. Roll 2d6. If roll is 2, 3, 11, or 12, umpire calls another balk. So runners are on base. So a balk is called on Kirk McCaskill. God, nothing's going right for these guys. A bulk on McCaskill scores Vizquel, moves Bayerga to third. Score is now 11 to nothing, and now we roll to see if another ball gets called. Either a 2, 3, or 11, or 12. 10, no. Okay, so no other ball is called. Now we go ahead and play normally. So there's your rare play. Eddie Murray still at the plate. Now Bayerga on at third with two outs. Pitch from McCaskill. Patient, 52. And that's a fly ball to right. Coming under it is going to be Jackson. And he makes the catch. And for the second time in this game, the Indians send nine to the plate in an inning. Five runs. One, two, three, four. Six hits. Six hits and a balk, which scored Vizquel. And we at the end of three, it's the Indians leading the White Sox 11 to nothing. Time out. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Cleveland leading 11 to nothing. And I can't believe that. I'm, I'm, I don't know where anybody is tonight, but that's okay. They'll catch on the replay, but they won't believe it. 
as right now, 11 to nothing is the earliest I've had a score like that in any game I've played. Charles Nagy will lead, will pitch, and he'll be going up against Frank Thomas as Chicago tries to get some respect in this game right now. The fans here at Jacobs Field are cheering overrated. So here's the pitch. In play, 0-9. That's a good start. That's a base hit. Thomas goes ahead and smacks that one into right field. That's going to bounce off the wall. Thomas is going to go for two, and he'll have a double. Lead off double for Thomas. He's safe at second. Thomas gets a hit, and that's the first hit off a of Charles, the first real base hit off of Nagy in this game. Next batter will be Julio Franco. Runner at second. Philip Reynolds says could be 30. Well, we'll see. Thomas on at second. Nagy with the pitch. In play 10. That's going to be a base hit for Franco. That's a single. Soft blooper into short right field. Runner on first advances. Runner on second score. So Franco is on first. Frank Thomas comes around, and the White Sox are finally on the board. It's now 11-1. to 1. So there'll be no shutout. Base hit for Franco. And now an 11-1 to 1 game. The batter is Robin Ventura. Still nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Ventura flew out to right. Pitch to Robin. Another in play. Another 12. And a base hit for Ventura. That's a single. Opposite field liner. Going into right field. Runner on first advances one base. Franco goes to second. He's going to hold. He's not going to do anything. He'll be safe at second there. Runners at first and second. Now the White Sox are now hitting. Three straight base hits off of Nagy here on the top of the fourth. Now the White Sox are doing something. And the next batter is Darren Jackson. Jackson reached on an error his last time up. They're going to go talk to Charles Nagy for a moment. Settle him down a bit. You got a 10-run lead. It should be enough. Still nobody out. Nagy checks and deals. Tough, 76, and that's a fly ball to center. Lofton's going to get to that, out number one, and Franco stays at second base. And now we'll see Lance Johnson. Johnson popped out his last time up. He's 0 for 1. Nagy checks and deals. And that is a tough 59. And fly ball to left. Bell will get to that one easily. Out number two. And now Mike Lavalier. Lavalier 0 for 1. Good chance for White Sox to get some more runs in. And they've got the one, but that's it. Nagy checking and dealing. Pitch coming. That's an in-play 82. Fly ball to center. Lofton's going to get to that. And that will end the inning. The White Sox get one run on three hits. But that is all as a couple of base runners are stranded. Bottom of the fourth. Now 11-1 to one, Cleveland. Kirk McCaskill will come out to pitch for the White Sox in the bottom of the fourth. The Indians have batted around twice in this inning, or I should say they've sent nine batters to the plate twice in this in this game. Paul Sorrento, I mean, you fixed my dinner. <laughs> Paul Sorrento will lead off for Cleveland here in the bottom of the fourth. Sorrento is one for one. McCaskill, pitch coming. 
tough. 69. That's a ground ball to short. Picked up by Guillen. Has it. Throws over to first. Out number one. And another ovation coming out for Manny Ramirez, who is two for two, a double and a homer, a grand slam in the first. One out. McCaskill's pitch. Patient, 96. That's a fly ball to left. He's not going to get a hit this time. Tim Raines will get to that. That's out number two. And now the batter is Tomei. Tomei, one for two, singled his last time up. McCaskill setting in. Tomei at the plate. Pitch. Tough. 40. Struck him out. Cold strike three. Tomei didn't like the pitch. Thought it was a little high. But the umpire looked at him and said, what are you complaining about? You're up 10 runs. Go take a seat, man. Side retired, a one, two, three inning for McCaskill, which they which the White Sox badly needed. Four in the book, still eleven to one. Top of the fifth. Nagy's fatigue inning is eight. He should be strong enough here. Like to remind you, we got more exciting baseball. Tomorrow will be game two of this American League Division Series. The White Sox here against the Indians. Tomorrow's pitcher for the White Sox will be Alex Fernandez. He goes tomorrow. And for the Indians, it will be for the Indians, it will be Jason it will be Jason Grimsley. I no, it'll be Dennis Martinez. Dennis Martinez goes tomorrow for Cleveland in tomorrow's game two. As SDG replays joins me here. Man, you're missing all the action, brother. We're in the fifth inning, and it's 11-1. to 1. Leading off for the White Sox is Ozzie Guillen. We'll also have some inside pitch baseball tomorrow. I was working on a game today. Got a little frustrated with some of the rules. Now I think I'm ready to go. It's okay. SDG replays can still check it on the replay when I, when I when I do it. Here's the pitch again. That's an in play 73 fly ball to center. Lofton will get to that. That's out number one. Got a little frustrated with the inside pitch rules. I now, now I think I got them. Now I think I can play. I'm actually going to play a game of inside pitch as soon as I'm done with this, but I'm going to do it offline. Here's Tim Raines. Raines is 0 for 2. Nagy checks and deals. Tough. 33. Base hit for Tim Raines. And that's not just a base hit. He smacks that one in the left center field corner. Raines is going to round second. He's going to slide into third. That is a triple for Raines. Raines is not going to let the White Sox go easily as he smacks a one-out triple. Safe at third. And the batter is Joey Cora. One out. Indians are playing back. They'll trade the out for the run. Here's the pitch. As you should. In play, 86. Ground ball to short. That's going to be easy play there by Vizquel. He'll throw to first. That's out number two. That's out number two. Reigns will score, and it's now 11 to 2. As the Indians traded the out for the run. Two outs now. And the batter is Frank Thomas. Thomas actually hit a double his last time up and scored. Charles Nagy checking in. Now pitches to Thomas. In play 44. And that's grounded right back to Nagy. Nagy's got it. 
easily spears it, throws to first, and that side is retired. The White Sox chip away at the lead a little bit, but they don't get much. They get one run on one hit. We go to the bot. We're halfway through the game. Bottom of the fifth coming up. 11 to 2, Tribe. Timeout. Sandy Alomar will come out and pit bat for the Indians. The White Sox are going through their bullpen pretty quickly. They still have four pitchers available. Roberto Hernandez will come out to pitch. He's their closer, really. But he's going to come out to pitch. Innings five and six. Sandy Alomar leads off here, bottom of the fifth. Pitch coming. Tough. 86. Ground ball to short. Guillen's got it. Throws it over to first. Out number one. Good hit by Alomar, but Guillen was right there. Here's Lofton. Lofton is 0 for 1, but he's walked twice and stole a base. Hernandez checking in. Tough. 20, tough 25, base hit by Lofton. He smacks that one into the deepest region of center field. Lofton rounding second, going for third. He has a triple. Tough 25, a triple. Lofton goes ahead and set, looks over at Tim Raines and says, if you can do it, I can do it. Lofton gets a triple. His first hit of the night. And a runner on third for the White for the Indians. Reigns gets a triple, and then Lofton does. And Lofton, as he was round, as he was sliding into third, he might have said something to Reigns. Reigns says, "Come on, man, just play ball." Lofton always had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. One out, runner on third, and the batter will be Omar Vizquel. White Sox are going to play the infield in. They don't really want any more runs. Hernandez pitches. That's a patient 97. That's a fly ball to left. That should score Lofton still. Patient 97 is a fly to left. Two outs. Lofton's run rating is an eight. It's a patient, so he can get a chance to run. Lofton's an eight. Reigns' arm is an eight. So we draw a card. Eight or lower. Eight or, eight or lower, Lofton scores. Nine or higher, he is thrown out. Seven, not a problem. Lofton will easily come in to score. It's now 12 to 2, Indians. Sacrifice fly works. As Steeler fan 1933 joins us. For the uh, destruction that I'm pretty sure he's witnessing right now. That's the second out. But the run does come in to score. The batter now will be Carlos Baerga. It is now 12 to 2. Hernandez pitching to Baerga. Patient 07. And that is going to be a base on balls. That is a walk. Bayerga hold goes to first. As White Sox pitching, definitely not in it tonight. Bayerga on it first. The batter now will be Albert Bell. 12 to 2. Haven't had a game like this since I played a game between the Braves and the Twins in a 1969 run-up series. The Twins won that game 15 to 3. I've not had a game like this since then. Bayerga on it first. Bell the batter. Here's the pitch. Defense check 41. That could be pro that could be problematic. Error check hit to short. The, ba the ball was hit again. His error rating is a 2. 1 to 64. Not going to cut it. That's going to be an error on Guillen. 
And it's a one base error. So Bell reaches first. Bayerga goes to second, and he'll stay there. An error on Guillen, E6. Runners advance, and that's the first error on the white on the White Sox. And the batter now is Eddie Murray, as Brandon Baker joins me in for some baseball. Although you guys really aren't missing much. If you take a look at the scoreboard, you'll see what I mean. I'll give you guys a recap at the end of this half inning. Runners at first and second. Eddie Murray at the plate. Two outs. Roberto Hernandez trying to keep it at 12-2. Here's the pitch. Patient, 98. He'll get out. He will get out of it. Fly ball to left. Ball is hit to Reigns. Reigns has got it, and the inning is over. One run for Cleveland on one hit and an error. Five in the books. Indians all over the White Sox, 12-2. to two. Timeout. Brandon Baker talking about pizza. We go to the top of the sixth inning. A little recap here for Brandon, because I know Brandon Baker would always like to have a recap. In the first inning, the Cleveland Indians scored six runs on three hits, one of them a grand slam by Manny, Ram by Manny Ramirez. In the third inning, Cleveland put up five runs on six hits. And, they, and Jason Bure, who was the starting pitcher of the White Sox, lasted one-third of an inning. That is the quickest I ever had a pitcher removed in any game I've played so far. That is the quickest. And that will be the quickest until, I, until a pitcher comes in there and doesn't get anybody out. So that's what's been happening on. And the White Sox did get a couple of runs, but down 12-2 to two here in the top of the sixth. And Charles Nagy actually pitching a pretty good game. Who knows? We'll see if the White Sox can at least try to um, get back into this. Top of the sixth inning, leading off for the Chai Sox is Julio Franco. Franco got a single his last time up. He is one for two. Pitch on the way. Patient off of Nagy. That's going to be a base on balls. Franco will go to first. Lead off runner on first and Franco. And we'll bring up Robin Ventura. No steal, no rolls, or no strat rolls. You're down by 10. As you guys are having pizza, pizza, you better save me a slice. I'm hungry over here. 12-2. Franco wanted first. Now Ventura the batter. Ventura singled his last time up. Nagy with the pitch. Patient, 87. And that's a ground ball to second. Ventura's double play rating's a 6, a 9. They'll get... Franco out at second on the on the fielder's choice. Ventura will make it to first. One out. And the next batter is Darren Jackson. Fans here at, Cle at Jacobs Field definitely enjoying the game. I mean, how can you not enjoy a 12-2 lead? I did not. I did not let the Yankees win. That's the way it went. Oh, I, one thing I should mention. I did notice a couple, of, uh, on a side note, I did notice a couple of thumbs down on the video. If you're thumbing down my video, if you're thumbing down my videos because of something maybe I did, inappropriate or anything like that, please do. I have no if, and then tell me what mistake I made. If you're thumbing down the video because a team that you like or dislike wins or loses, don't do that. Please. A couple of, if you'll notice, Sports Time Machine and a couple of other people mentioned that in the comments. If anyone here thumbed down that for that reason, please go back to that video, if, if you would, for me, and remove that and make it a like. Because that has nothing to do with it. Whoever wins or loses not matter. All it is is just trying to play the game. But I do thank you, everyone, for joining me tonight. One out. Ventura on it first. Jackson. Patient on Nagy. That's a patient 77. That's a fly ball to center. Lofton's going to get to that, and that's out number two. Darren Jackson flies out to center. 
Ventura still on at first, and the batter will be Lance Johnson. Johnson is 0 for 2. Charles Nagy, pitching very well. He's only given up two runs, but he's got such a lead. I don't see Nagy coming out in this game. I really don't. Here's the pitch. He did have a few complete games. In play 23. Actually, that's going to be a single for Lance Johnson. That's a base hit. Ventura with a run rating of six will barely make third, but he's got it. A base hit for Johnson, and now the White Sox have a chance to maybe do something. With runner to the corners and two outs. And here's Mike Lavalier. Indians playing the infield back, of course. You got a 10-run lead. Nagy looking into Lavalier. Lavalier is 0 for 2. Here's the pitch. Wheelhouse check, 08. Lavalier just missed it, but he's going to smack a double into left. He's going to smack a double into left field. He just missed a homer. Just missed it, but it is a double. It will score Ventura. It will score Johnson. Lavalier will be at second. As the White Sox try to make the score a little bit more respectable, but it's now 12 to 4. Double for Lavalier. What a hit that was. Clears the bases. Lavalier on at second. Now 12 to 4. Thumbs down, abuser equals. Yeah, I know, right? It's all right. 12 to 4 now as the White Sox get a couple of runs. And the batter is Ozzy Gian. Now they're going to talk to Nagy for a quick minute. And now I don't think Nagy might not get the, the complete game because now he'll be fatigued at the eighth inning. But two outs. The White Sox trying to make it respectable. Here's the pitch. Defense check 0-3. Oh, That's going to be a problem. Error check to second base. The ball is at the Bayerga. His error rating is a one. Not a chance. That's going to be a boot. Bayerga makes an error. And that's a one base error. Lavalier will go to third. And Guillen goes to first. Still, now runners in the corners. An E4. Second error on the Indians in this game. That's error number two. And now a chance for Tim Raines, the batter. Not yet. Not yet. Runners at first and third. Two outs. Now Reigns. Reigns at a triple his last time up. If Nagy allows another run, yes. 12 to 4. Still pretty, still pretty comfortable, but Reigns could make this very interesting. Lavalier just missed a homer. Now the pitch from Nagy. Ballpark again, 36. That's gonna be that he's batting from the left side. That's gonna be a wheelhouse for Reigns. But a wheelhouse, 95, he gets a good smack at it, but he got under it. Coming under it near the track is Albert Bell. A wheelhouse, 95, will not cut it. Side retired. And the fans actually breathe a sigh of relief. That was well hit. But for the White Sox, two runs on two hits, a walk and an error. 12 to 4 now, Tribe. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Roberto Hernandez, the White Sox closer, and he is the and he is the sixth pitcher that's going tonight. He will pitch the bottom of the sixth inning. Leading off for Cleveland is Paul Sorrento. Sorrento is one for two. He doubled earlier in the game. Hernandez pitches to Sorrento. Tough. 77. Fly ball center field. Johnson will get to that. And that is out number one. 
And that's the first time I've called his name in the field. Paul, nice catch by Lance Johnson, one man down. And again, a big ovation for Manny Ramirez, Man Ram. Man Ram, two for three, a, a, whole, a grand slam and a double, an RBI double, as a matter of fact. Ramirez has got five RBIs in this game. This wild pitch is 30. A wild pitch, okay, there, a wild pitch is, a th depends on what it says here. So if it says wild pitch 30, that means any time I roll a 30, a wild pitch, when he is when he's pitching, a wild pitch is, comes up. Base runners advance, and then you use the same dice roll according to Joe. If there's no, if there's a blank here, no wild pitch can occur on the dice unless a wild pitch occurs in rare play, which can happen. There are wild pitches in rare play and pass ball. Some pitchers have wild pitches going up from 30 to 39. There are some pitchers that have it going up to at least 30 to 39. Then you got the strikeout rate, the, the special strikeouts, which I don't think anybody in – there's only a couple pitchers, I think, in 1994 that have that. One out, man ram the batter. Pitch from Hernandez. Patient, 16, base on balls. Ramirez will find the bait, will find first base again. Third time he's on base tonight. That's a walk. And now the batter is Jim Tomei. Ramirez on at first. No threat to steal, of course. You're up by eight runs. He ain't doing that. Roberto Hernandez with the pitch. Tough. 81 and fly ball center field. Reigns is going to get. No, uh, Johnson's going to get to that. Second out. And Ramirez holds it first. And now Sandy Alomar. Alomar is one for three. Ramirez on it first. Hernandez, this is his last inning. He would like to not give the Indians anything. Here's the pitch. Tough. 82. And that's grounded to short. Nice pickup by Guillen. He'll throw, to, he'll throw to second to get the force, and the inning is over. Roberto Hernandez actually pitched pretty well there to get the job done for the White Sox. But six are in the books, and it is still 12-4. to four. We go to the top of the seventh. The Indians all over the White Sox in this game. This is just the first. This is the first game of this ALDS, and Cleveland is not is making a statement tonight. Leading off for the White Sox will be Joey Cora. Nagy still on the mound. The pitch. Tough. 65. And that's grounded to second base. Easy pick up there by Bayerga. Throws it over to first. Out number one. One man down. The batter will be the big hurt, Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas is one for two. He doubled in this game. Here's the pitch. Wheelhouse 08. Crack. And that ball is hit high. That hole is hit deep to right center field. It's gone. Home run. Big hurt Frank Thomas. No doubt about it. Nagy just threw him an absolute grapefruit. And Thomas turned it into fruit salad. And it's out of here.
Home run to Big Hurt. And it is now 12 to 5. As Thomas goes ahead and says, hey, look, I can still hit the big jack. And the next batter is Julio Franco. That will be it for Charles Nagy. He has done what he could, but he pitched beautifully, but he did it right. Thankfully, the, the Indian offense gave him a chance. Indians are going to the bullpen. And they're going to bring in Matt Turner as he will come out and pitch. Turner's a long reliever, so he can actually finish the rest of the game if necessary. Matt Turner will pitch for the Indians. Julio Franco is now the batter for the White Sox. 12 to 5 now. And here's the pitch. That's an in-play 70, and that's a ground ball to second base. Easy pickup up by Erga. Throws the first out number two. And now here's Robin Ventura. Ventura got a single. A single and field his choice. He's one for three. Two outs. Turner trying to finish off the inning. Pitch coming. In play, 79. That's a fly ball to center. Lofton will get to that one. And the inning is over. One run for the White Sox on one big jack by the Big Hurt. And it's now 12-5. to five. The White Sox have now scored at least one run in the last four innings. As they're chipping away at the lead, but can they actually make a comeback? And we are at the seventh inning stretch. Timeout on the field. Senior taking out to the ball games. 12 to 5 Cleveland will be right back. Random unrelated question. With bases loaded in a tight game, no outs, and a ground ball was hit to the pitcher. If he wanted to throw home, would the dice roll result be different if it's called infield in instead of regular depth infield? Wondering if it assumed pitchers are not always – oh, pitchers are always considered in. However, um, payoff pitches infield in is a lot is a little bit more – abstract than than like inside pitch where inside pitch if the infield is in you would check a base running rating to see what would happen there on an infield in there's two infield in charts the infield in and the infield in play at home chart pitcher is always considered in okay but he doesn't get any but he does not get any um minuses to his range so if it's an infield in it always it really depends on what the red dice say on infield in 
The red dice, pretty much, you're thinking of inside pitch, actually. Exactly right. Inside pitch, infield in does take account because inside pitch's base running is a lot deeper than payoff pitch's base running. Payoff pitch, very simple. Roll dice or draw a card, and I can already tell you what happens. Okay? Um, but if it's infield in, depending on what the red dice say, okay, is what happens. The disadvantage, the disadvantages to running on infield in, okay, if a, if a die roll is 9 or 10 and it's a grounder, it automatically is a hit. A line out is automatically a hit, okay, on infield in, on infields in. So infield in is kind of abstracted in payoff pitch, but it's a lot easier, of course, because the dice pretty much tell you or the cards pretty much tell you what happens. It wouldn't matter. No, it would not matter. They're in automatically. You're correct, Brandon. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Indians leading the White Sox 12 to 5. And the White Sox have to bring in another pitcher. And it's going to be Scott Sanderson. And they're going to hope maybe. And he's a long reliever, so he should be able to get out. But unfortunately, look at those wheelhouses. Could be tough. Scott Sanderson will come out and pitch. And he can finish the game if necessary, if he can. Bottom of the seven, 12 to five. Who leads off? Uh, oh, okay. Kenny Lofton. Kenny Lofton will lead off for the Indians here on the top in the bottom of the seventh inning. Certainly would apply to this 12-5 route. Nope. Scott Sanderson pitching to Lofton. Here's the pitch. And there's a wheelhouse, but a wheelhouse 97 is a definite fly out to right. Easily made by Jackson. And that's out number one. <laughs> First pitch is a wheelhouse, but a 97 there. And Lofton flies out. One man down. And the batter will be Vizquel. Vizquel is two for four tonight. Sanderson. Trying to keep it 12, trying to keep where it's at, but the White Sox are probably already thinking about tomorrow. Here's the pitch. Patient 25, that's a walk. The scale goes to first. And he will be on base for the third time in this game. And the batter will be Carlos Baerga. No need to roll strat rolls. You're up by seven runs. Sanderson looking in, pitching to Bayerga. And that's a ballpark check, 47. Bayerga hitting from the left side. That's going to be a ballpark wheelhouse. Wheelhouse 11, crack. And that ball is hit high. That ball is hit deep. And that ball is hit gone. Home run, Carlos Bayerga. And the Whites and the Indians are just embarrassing the White Sox in this game. Carlos Baerga, two-run jack. As he sends that one over the... As he sends that one clearly out of here. And the score is now 14-5. to five. We've had nothing but pretty much close games and a couple of shutouts in every game of the division series we've played. I, this is the first game we've had something like this in these playoffs. As John West joins us for the destruction and no, and, uh, oh, no, don't worry, I got plenty. Um, but uh, as John West is here, this is one destruction. And no, John, your screen is not lying to you. That's the score of the game. The next batter is Albert Bell for Cleveland. Scott Sanderson, not fatigued yet. He gave up two runs. He's a long reliever. He can give up three before that. Bell is the only batter on the Indians who's not joined the hit parade. He's walked, reached on an error, and struck out twice. Albert Bell does not have a hit. Ballpark, 0-2. Wheelhouse, of course. Wheelhouse for Albert Bell. And, of course, as soon as I say that, crack. 
The ball is hit high. The ball is hit deep. And Albert Bell says to me, shut up. I'm going deep. And it's gone. Albert Bell of Jack. So a home run for Albert Bell. A ballpark 0-2, which is a definite wheelhouse, and a 40 against the righties, and Albert Bell shuts me up. And now the Indians are up 15 to 5, and that now ties the most runs I've had in any game. That ties the Braves Twins game, I add, when I first got these things. And that's it for Sanderson. He's done. They're down to two pitchers left, at least in the bullpen. Dane Johnson will come out now, and he will attempt to pitch. At least they're getting practice. Still one out here in the bottom of the seventh, 15 to 5. And the batter now is Eddie Murray. And of course, as soon as I say that Albert Bell doesn't join the hit parade, and I'm sorry I'm wrong. Albert Bell wasn't the only one. Eddie Murray hasn't joined the hit parade. He's 0 for 3. He walked in the first inning. Did I just did I just cue karma? Dane Johnson's pitch. Tough, 69, and that's going to be grounded to second base. Easily picked up by Cora, throws it over to first, out number two. And Murray looks like he might not be the only one joining the hit parade. Two outs, and the batter is Paul Sereno. And Paul Sereno, we'll see what he does here. Sereno is one for three, walked and doubled. It is the most runs of the 94 restart, yes. It's not the it's also the it's tied the most runs for the most runs in a game I've played. It is the most runs of the 94 restart. Two outs. Dane Johnson pitching to Sereno. Patient, 38. Base hit for Sereno. The, yeah, the White Sox just can't catch a break. That's going to be a double. Sereno will go to hit second easily. And he has his second double of the game. And the batter is Manny Ramirez. Sereno on its second now. Indians are just moving through the motions. The Indians want this game to end too, but Sereno, but the White Sox pitches is just awful. Two outs. Sereno on its second. Ramirez at the plate. The dice are being relentless. Patient. 22. Base on balls. Ramirez goes to first. Runners at first and second for Jim Tomei. The fans here at Jacobs Field are probably all drunk. We're probably all drunk in the seats with a 10-run lead again. Dane Johnson. They need one more out here in the bottom of the seventh. Here's the pitch. Ballpark 58 for Tommy. It's in play. He just misses a wheelhouse. But an in play 26 is a base hit. That's a single. Sereno will come around and score. Ramirez goes to third. Tome goes to first. And we now have the most runs scored in any payoff pitch game I played. Runners at first and third. And the score is now 16 to 5. The hits just keep on coming. 16 to 5. Runners at first and third with two outs. The batter is Sandy Alomar. And for the third time in this game, Cleveland has sent nine to the plate. Alomar, one for four. 
Dane Johnson, only his first run he's given up. Here's the pitch. Patient, 39. <laughs> Base hit for Alomar. <laughs> it's a single. Ramirez will score. Tome goes to third. Now this is just becoming a laugher. Alomar goes to first. Now I may run out of mark. Now I may run out of scoring markers. Base hit by Alomar. It's now 17 to 5. And runners still at first and third. And now the, the Indians have batted around. Don't worry, I got room. I always leave a little space just for something like this. The batter now is Kenny Lofton, and he started this inning with a flyout. Dane Johnson. They're gonna I'm gonna fatigue. I'm gonna fatigue him. I, I can't take yeah, no, I'll take him out. Dane Johnson comes out as the White Sox are just being embarrassed. The last pitcher in the bullpen is Scott Ruffcorn. And he can pitch. Yeah, actually, he's a and he's ah, well, actually, Ruff, Ruffcorn's actually a oh, he's a starter. How did I get him in there? Ruffcorn shouldn't be in there. Hmm. Time out. Did I make an error on my pitchers? I did indeed. Shouldn't be in there, actually. I'm going to keep Dane Johnson out there, but I'm going to fatigue him. So give me a moment. I never thought I'd have to bring these cards out, but time out on the field. Strikeouts five point two. That's gonna be this. So fatigue pitcher comes into play for Dane Johnson. They're gonna get a starter warmed up, which I can use. And it will be the and it will be a starter. So Dane Johnson, fatigued pitcher, will now try to get out of this inning. Kenny Lofton is the batter. He's now fatigued. We'll see what the what the White Sox want to do in the eighth inning. We can go to a starter, and that starter will be probably the least the, the, the uh, most rested starter available. He will not be tomorrow's pitcher, that's for sure. Runners at first and third. Kenny Loft in the batter. Here's the pitch. Tough. 84. And that's going to be a ground ball to second base. Max picked up by Cora. He throws the first to get the out, and the side is retired. Kenny Lofton started the inning with an out, and he ends the inning with an out. Five runs, one, two, three, four, five, six hits, no errors, seven in the books, Indians all over the White Sox, 17 to five, time friggin' out. All right, you got it, Phil. Top of the eighth inning in this American League Division Series. The fans here at Jacobs Field most have left. They've already they've already know that Cleveland's going to completely obliterate the White Sox in this game. But they never knew it would be a 17-5 score. That is the most run scored in any game I've played, 
period, combined and for one team. Matt Turner will pitch for the for the Indians here in the top of the eighth. Leading off for the White Sox will be Darren Jackson. Nobody out as we start the eighth inning. Defense check 61. Range check to third. The ball is hit to Tome. His range is an A. He's got no problem. Great play by Tome. Throws to first. Out number one. As the White Sox are looking up at the scoreboard and knowing they're already thinking about tomorrow. Here's Lance Johnson. Johnson singled his last time up. Here's the pitch from Turner. In play for in play 44. That's grounded to first. Coming under it is going to be Sorrento. He grabs it. He'll take it himself for out number two. Two men down. And the batter now is Mike Lavalier. No need to bring anybody off the bench. The White Sox have pretty much resigned themselves to just getting this game done with. They want to win, yes, but. Lavalier's got a double. He's one for three. And here's the pitch. Patient 70, patient 75, and that's a fly ball to center. Lofton's going to get to that one. And the inning is over a 1-2-3 inning for Turner. Side retired. The first inning that the White Sox have not scored any runs in since the last four. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 17 to 5, Cleveland. Dane Johnson, fatigue pitcher. We'll see how long he can go. As we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, Omar Vizquel leads off for the Indians. And here's the pitch. That's a wheelhouse 70 on Vizquel, but that's too high. Grounded hit to second base. Easy pickup by Cora. Throws to first, out number one. One man down. The batter is Bayerga. Bayerga having a great night. He is two for three, a home run and a double. Dane Johnson. See if he can go ahead and keep it just the way it is to get out this inning quickly. Here's the pitch to Bayerga. That's a tough 0 3. Got him, look. I got him. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Dane Johnson gets a nice strikeout on Bayerga. Fatigue pitcher, but he does it. That's two outs. And now Albert Bell gets a nice ovation here from the Cleveland fans that are still here that haven't left already to celebrate the win. Bell hit a home run his last time up. If anybody says there's no offense in payoff pitch baseball, please give him a link to this game. Thank you. Dane Johnson, fatigued, trying to get this inning over. Here's the pitch to Bell. In play, 0-4. Nope, Albert Bell's going to go ahead and smack a double. As he hits that one into off the left center field wall, Bell will go to second and will hold there. Double for Bell. And now another chance for Eddie Murray, who has not joined the hit parade. He's 0 for 4. Everybody else has a hit except for him. Dane Johnson, fatigue, try to do it. Here's the pitch. Wheelhouse 70, wheelhouse 71, but nope, that's a fly ball to center field. Eddie Murray got under it. Coming under it is going to be Johnson, and he makes the catch. Side retired. Amazing. Dane Johnson actually did better fatigue than he did when he wasn't. 
side retired, eight innings in the books, Indians obliterating Chicago 17 to 5. We'll be timeout. We go to the top of the ninth. Matt Turner is a long reliever. He can pitch it. And I think, and I truly believe the White Sox, I'm going to take Dane Johnson off. I don't see, I do not see Chicago scoring 12 runs here in the top of the ninth inning. I really doubt that. But we have seen ninth inning magic. So is it possible we could see the White Sox scoring 12 runs? To tie this game? Am I invoke am I invoking a little karma? Top of the night, leading off for the White Sox will be Ozzy Gian. Matt Turner with the pitch. Patient 39. And that's a base hit by Gian. It's a single. He gets the leadoff man on. That's Gian's first hit, actually. He did get on base on an error the last time up. So Ozzie Guillen gets on base. And the batter will be Tim Raines. Cleveland does have plenty of pitchers to go through if necessary. They got plenty of pitchers. They're going to see if we can let Matt Turner finish the game out. Turner's only given up one run. He can give up. He can give up. I'm sorry, he's given up two. He's given up two runs. He can give up one more before he's fatigued. Here's the pitch to Reigns. Patient 59. And he walks Reigns. He walks Reigns. Now runners at first and second with nobody out. I wanted to see if he complete the game. Now I have to remove him. As Cleveland's going to take Matt Turner out. And that's the right thing to do. The next batter is Joey Cora. And they're going to bring in Eric Plunk to see if he can close this game out. Remember, all relief pitchers will be ready to go tomorrow. They'll still be fine. Because it's a simulated travel day between between games two and three. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Top of the night. Eric Plunk now coming out to pitch. And the pitch to Cora. Patient. 72. Ground ball to second base. Cora's double play ratings is six. Plunk's an eight. They're going to turn it. Second base to shortstop. To first, two outs. Gian advances to third. Four, six, three, double play by Cora. Gian moves to third base with two outs. And now the batter is Frank Thomas, who wouldn't mind putting depositing one more home run to show the Indians fans here that the White Sox are not dead by any means. Although they're going to have to lick their wounds after this one. Frank Thomas, two for four. Home run and a double. Gian on at third. Indians playing infield back. Here's the pitch. Tough. 67. And that is a ground ball to second. Coming up with it is Bayerga. Pumps once. Throws to first. And this ball game mercifully is over. No runs, one hit for the White Sox. As the Cleveland Indians absolutely embarrass the Chai Sox 17 to 5 and will take a 1 0 series lead. 
most runs scored in any game I've ever played in payoff pitch, most runs scored by any one team in a game of payoff pitch. The, the 1994 Cleveland Indians eclipsed the 1969 Minnesota Twins as the Indians score 17 runs against that Twins team's 15. And I'll give you a final line score here in a second. I'll show you the, and I'll show you the card, and I'll show it to you here. Here's the here is the line score card for you. If you guys want to, you might want to make a, a quick copy and paste if you want. But there it is. For the Cleveland Indians, 17 runs on 17 hits, two errors. For the White Sox, five runs, eight hits, and one errors. What also hurt the White Sox was eight walks. They had eight bases on balls. And that's one, and, and of course, one error on them. There's your line score right there for this crazy game. As the Cleveland Indians beat the White Sox 17 to 5, the winning pitcher is Charles Nagy. Jason Beret takes the loss. Nagy goes to 1 0, and Beret goes to 0 and 1. Of course, there's no save. But what a what a whoop! What somebody opened up a can of someone opened up a can of whoop ass on the White Sox. But let's not get hasty. The White Sox are going to lick their wounds and they're going to come back tomorrow looking to even the series up. And they're going to have Alex Fernandez pitching for the White Sox, and the Indians are going to have Dennis Mart going to have Dennis Martinez. So, still, what a way to start this division series. Tomorrow's line, Indians minus 12, Chicago White Sox. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, the Cleveland Indians know that the White Sox are going to come after them with a vengeance tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Anyway, <laughs> Steeler fan, 1933, Brandon Baker, Philip Reynolds, John West. Thank you all for joining me tonight. It was a pleasure to do a game like this. Most runs scored in a payoff pitch game that I've done. Most runs, most runs scored by one team in a payoff pitch I've gone, which eclipsed the, the uh, 1969 Twins in the runner-up series I did against the Braves in 69. That'll do it here. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow for game two of this unbelievable series. Have fun with this, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Final score, Indians. Uh, Indians literally fold the White Sox up and put them in the closet. 17 to 5 and take a 1-0 series lead. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.